Hey everyone, welcome back to some more Python programming tutorials. We've been looking at the NPy screen module, and recently we've been checking out form objects. We've been modifying their size, changing their position, and uh, now we'll actually get into some more forms of the form object. You'll notice in the documentation, it shows a lot of really cool options for what you have here. There are different standard form classes that you can inherit and kind of subclass to make your own nifty thing. So, in this video, I'm going to be talking about action form and split form. Other ones like pop-up and uh, action form minimal and stuff like that are pretty, pretty simple to understand. Uh, obviously, action form and split form are as well, but those are the ones that I want to show you and uh, kind of get, get to some cool stuff with. So, let's get to it. We'll take a, we'll take a look at split form first. Um, it's pretty simple. All it has is a horizontal line across the middle. The method get halfway will tell you where it has been drawn. So this might be useful if you kind of want to compartmentalize the forms or the information that your user is entering. So I mean, hey, it's easy enough. Since it's part of a form object, everything that we've already done, even all these changes we've made with the position and the number of lines and columns, those will work just fine if we just change the form to a split form. So now if I run this code, actually, I should have saved this as 07, and uh, I'll save back to what we initially had as 06. Get back over to 07, and we're good to go. Okay. Now Python 07 will give us our split form. And just like it said, we've got a horizontal line across the middle here. So, cool. Now, we can play with this just a little bit. It tells us this variable, draw line at, this determines the position where the line should be drawn across the screen. It doesn't have to be the middle. It can be set by passing draw line at the constructor, or it can be set automatically by the value re returned by the method get halfway. So get halfway by default is a function that returns the y coordinate of the bar across the middle of the form. By default, it is the middle, but of course you can reset it to what it's going to equal if you pass in the draw line at. So uh, those kind of go hand in hand. Let's play with it. If I were to pass in draw line at as an argument to my constructor, draw line at, let's say, um, I don't know, how long is our, we got 10 lines. So if we said eight, I'll try and run this. We're down at the bottom and we're kind of like going through our okay bar, our okay button. That's kind of cool, that's a cool look, right? We could do the same thing like down at seven and then all the options down at the bottom you can like add to those would be kind of nice. Um, what else is there? I mean, that's really, I guess, all I wanted to show you on there. There is, of course, move line on resize. This is uh, kind of determined if the form is resized. Like, if a form fills up the whole screen and then you resize your terminal. NPy, curse, NPy screen, sorry, does have support for that. It will try and resize the form accordingly, and the move line on resize will determine, you can set it, whether or not it will resize along with the form, which it should. <laughs> by default, it looks like uh, it is set by, by it's, it is set to false by default. It looks like though. If you're interested in that one, you can totally play with it. I don't think I'm going to because I never have the need to resize my terminal. <laughs> okay, now I want to check out action form. Action form is super cool because it gives you a little bit more functionality with your form. I'll get rid of my draw line at argument and uh, we'll change this to an action form and you can see right away what the change is we got cancel as well as okay we got two options here now both of them at the moment do nothing they uh, kinda don't do anything with our program they still exit the code exit the program but they have special functions so this action form class creates okay and cancel buttons selecting either exits the form the method on OK or on cancel is called when the form exits, assuming one of those is selected. So subclassing these kind of normally would override them, or both, which is what we'll end up doing, but by default they do nothing. So on OK, it's interesting, normally all the other functions are like lowercase letter, capital letter, or for after editing and for like on start, but on OK and on cancel, interesting that they're both underscored and lowercase letters. So, now you can see, if we had forms on OK, we'll take in the self keyword, 
Right now, that we'll have it do nothing, but we'll say, uh, OK button pressed. And on cancel. Cancel button pressed. Now, here's an interesting thing, because obviously these functions are being called, because, I mean, that's what we just learned, that we know that's happening, but we're not able to really see it. If I tried to, um, like, change a value as to one of these... Oh, you notice, yeah, I was playing this with, with this before, actually, where I set a variable name to the widgets that I added, F name and L name refer to first name and last name, and I set that up because I wanted to actually uh, see if I could modify the values after I pressed the button. Because you can access any attributes and variables to a widget on the form by actually using the dot selector and then getting to that. So I can say fname.value can equal OK button pressed. But the thing is, since this exits the form, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to see it. Even if I removed the, um, uh, what is it, next form option, I think, yeah, right over at the after the, in the after editing, if I remove that, even if I try to do this, if I hit the OK button, OK, cool, it does work for us, that's awesome, <laughs> OK button is pressed, now if I cancel, nothing's going to really change, but I had to use Control-C to break out of that, like I said here, and then we can say, for the cancel button if we want L name cancel button is pressed let's see this code cancel cancel button pressed or OK OK button is pressed so again control C to break out of that so okay that was kind of a two-fold lesson that I didn't really mean to do but it's awesome that it happened that way you can access specific attributes and properties of your widgets by having them be variables that are returned by the self add function or the add function of your form object and then the on ok and on cancel functions that come with an action form you can override and have functionality depending on what button is pressed so sweet that's that's i mean there we go that's what i wanted to show you guys pretty simple split form and action form We'll get into others very, very soon. I know there is one more that I want to look at, hint, hint, but um, I want to show you something else before that because it, I think this is a good time uh, to show you notifying and message boxes and confirm and de and unconfirm uh, pop-up boxes. So yeah, we'll get into that in the next tutorial, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Maybe you liked the video, maybe leave me a comment, some constructive criticism. If you're feeling generous, subscribe. <laughs> you know, I'd love that. Thanks, guys. Adios.